humans, it's just Martine and welcome to my July reading stats. The month of July was a lot slower for reading for me after the hecticness that was June. I was traveling a lot less in July, I was working a lot more in July, I was focusing on a lot of other things that I love doing with my time aside from reading in July. All of those things were good for me. I feel like I'm revved up about reading again. For some people this will not look like a break, but the amount of reading that I did was a much more sustainable amount. So without further ado, let's talk all the details about the books that I read in the month of July. We'll start with the number of books that I read, which was 20, and these 20 books came to a total of 7,939 pages read. This means that my average per day should have been just a little over 264 pages. In actuality, because of some books that I had started in June and continued into July, my average pages per day was 234. In total, I spent just a little over 85 hours reading in the month of July. This is significantly less than I spent reading in June, but again, that is a good thing. I feel like 85 hours is still a lot of reading, but a more respectable amount maybe. This means that on average per day I was reading for 2.7 hours. I like to say that the best possible type of normal reading day for me would have three hours of reading, so it's a little less than three hours of reading per day. Not that far off, but still just a note. I use my eyeballs to read for 31 out of 31 days in the month, 100% of the days, and I use my earballs 0% of the days, 0 out of 31 days. Note for later on in this video that that doesn't mean I didn't read any audiobooks, just that I didn't read any during the day. I listen to audiobooks while I fall asleep and that never makes it into how many earball days I have of reading because I do that every night. You'll notice I say I read audiobooks for zero days but then later I'll say that I did read audiobooks so that's why the discrepancy. And then it took me an average of 6.65 days to read a book, about a week per book which I think is great. But the really interesting stuff to talk about are the graphs. So here we're going to have first book genre for the month. My biggest genre for the month was romance. This is probably because one, like I didn't have a ton of reads and so when I focused on like a small subset it really racked up quickly. And two, since at the end of June I was doing Wonderathon and I could really only focus on thriller mysteries, I wanted something lighter than that and I turned to romance for four of my reads. I also read quite a bit of nonfiction. I still managed to read a good number of thriller books which is interesting. <laughs> Fantasy also has a pretty significant slice of the pie at 15%. This was three books so the distribution in this graph looks like a little different from a normal month for me but not very different. I mentioned that I read quite a bit of nonfiction. How much fiction versus nonfiction did I read? We have this graph where 15% of my reads were nonfiction books. This was three of my 20 reads. This is high for my nonfiction reads for the month because my total for the year is 8% of my reads being nonfiction, so 15% is above that. I will say one of the major differences between how much I read in June and how much I read in July were the size of the books that I was reading. So I still had some short reads. For instance, my shortest book was Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus, which was 69 pages, but my longest book was significantly longer than the longest book that I read in the month of June, and that was The Crow Girl, which was 866 pages. Now technically I read half of that in June, but it's still finished this month, we're gonna count it. And my average pages per book was 396 point something, which is ridiculously high compared to last month's stat, which I think was maybe like around 200, maybe below. And that's led to kind of an interesting distribution in my graph. Whereas in the month of June, I only had small and medium books. I had at least one book from every category. Small books are under 300 pages, medium books between 300 and 500, 500 to 700 is large and 700 plus is chunky. So I only had that one chunky read, The Crow Girl, but at least I had one. I had several large reads, so over 500 pages, 15% of my reads, so that was three books. And then medium really shown, whereas I feel like the small books really shown in the month of June, especially towards the end of June when I was reading a lot of short stories, but 55% of my July reads were between 300 and 500 pages. The star rating distribution is also interesting. It is not a very wide range distribution. It goes from 4.5 to 3, nothing below 3, nothing above 4.5, so I did not find a 5 star read in the month of July, but I also didn't read anything I disliked strongly. There were moments in some of my higher rated books that I disliked strongly, but the books themselves I read it pretty well. You can see that half of my reads were four star reads and I will take that any day. I only had the one four and a half star read so even that was a little touch and go as to whether or not I'd get anything over four stars for the month, but I did. And this means that my average rating for the whole month was 3.7, which 
is pretty good. I've definitely had months where my rating has been lower. I will take it. For series versus standalone, I largely read standalones this month with 60% of my reads being standalones, but I did have several books that were part of series with the other 40% being made up of those. I think this one is so funny because at first I thought it was a glitch and I went and I hand counted this to see, but for author status, it is split 50-50 between authors I've read from before and authors that were new to me, right down the middle. I think that's kind of fun. I was half like, let's stick with what I know and half like, let's do something new. So I appreciate it. For type of publishing, as always, the books that I read in the month were largely traditionally published, but I do have a pretty nice slice. 15% of them were independently published, another three books. I don't know why 15% is like the number of July, but it is. Most of the books that I read in July were backlist books, which is pretty typical for me. I think like two thirds almost of them were backlist books. You're looking at the graph right now, not me. And then the rest were almost pretty evenly split between 2023 and 2024. Ironically, four books from 2020 24 three books from 2023. For age range, I largely relied on adult books with about two thirds of my graph representing adult reads. And then I did have the three and four for children's and YA. I actually think it's so fun. The number 20 splits very specific ways in almost all of these graphs. For format read, I largely read ebooks with a little over half of my reads for the month being ebooks at 55%, but I actually read a pretty large amount of physical books, especially for my Readathon Rejects video, and so I had 30% physical books, which is so much better than the month before. I also, as you will see, did read three audiobooks. Those were the three audiobooks I got through during the nighttime while I was trying to fall asleep throughout the month, hence the zero earball days translating to three whole books. I acquired exactly half of these books from Libby. I'm really proud though of the owned section of this pie. Again, the Readathon Rejects video came through for that section of the pie. I also borrowed one book, I think it was from like the Amazon Prime borrowing system. I read one NetGalley book and then I had two Kindle Unlimited books. That's all for the graphs. Let's talk about some more numbers though. Specifically, let's shift our focus to money. I acquired 12 books in the month of July. I am hoping, nay, begging myself that this number goes down in the months when I'm back at school. But while I'm home, I do tend to acquire the majority of the books that I acquire throughout the year. So 12 books this month, even though I did not read 12 of my own books this month see how that's a problem? Okay. <laughs> but I only spent $8.75 on them. You might be like, hmm, I smell something coming. And you're right, there's a Dollar Tree haul coming soon, probably the last one of the summer. So get hyped. Talking about the 50% of the reads that I read thanks to Libby though, let's talk about some library savings. In the month of July, I saved $167.91 by reading from my library. This brings my total savings from the year up to $2,683.94. Did I say that right? I said it right. So a smaller savings savings month this month because I read fewer books, but still insane. I saved so much more money than I spent on books, and that is always the goal. Speaking of goals, let's talk about them. My Goodreads goal for the year was 52 books. I've read 262 books, so I'm now over 500% of that goal, which is insane. Am I okay? Yes. <laughs> I am just so committed to not changing this goal. It's 52. Doesn't matter how much I read, it's 52. I also had a goal to read 24 own books, although I need to rethink this goal in general because reading 24 with the number that I brought in this summer is simply not sufficient to keep up with my ever expanding collection. Regardless, I would like to celebrate the fact that I hit this goal because I've read 27 owned books out of 24, so we're past 100%. And although that was a major victory, we have kind of a loss because I also plan to read 24 owned ebooks and I didn't read a single one this month, so I'm still still where I was last month at 14 of them read for the year. So I'm a little over halfway through that goal at 58.33%, but I've still got some work to do. My goal for the month of August is for that number to change please. <laughs> With that said, those are all the stats that I have for you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. How was your reading month in July and what are you looking forward to reading in the month of August? And subscribe for more bookish and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!